What's up everybody, it's your boy Showtime Doctor. So I wanted to give you guys a brief explanation of the factions. I've gotten some more info since my last few videos. And give you kind of a strengths and weaknesses of what they're capable of and what they lack. So that when you guys decide which factions you're going to invest in early game, it's going to be the, uh, the proper decision here. So <clears throat> right here on the wiki you can look at all the factions. So we'll go ahead and go to it, into it now. Now the protagonists, protagonists are basically, that's going to be the hero group, the, the heroes that are focused about in the story. Uh, it's not that big a deal, it's just they're uh, highlighting the main characters, but the teaming's not that great at the start, so up to you. It does have some notable members though, like Liana and Tiaris, both of them are the top tier healers in the game. Leden, he's one of the more powerful characters in the game. But, you know, they, they also share other uh, other factions, so you don't have to take this just to buff them, necessarily. So Now next, we're going to get to Origin of Light. <clears throat> so Origin of Light, it's kind of this kind of weird mashup of heroes. And what it is, it's basically a jumble of a collection of heroes. They kind of have a jack-of-all-trades thing going on. Like, there's a lot of roles that they're covering here. So there's, like, Healer... Etc. Night stuff, caster, all that. But um, they can serve you fairly well. But their issue is, they're kind of like a bar. They can do a lot of things well, but they never, they don't do any particular thing the best per se. And all of the other factions that have those roles can do those things better in general. So. That's what that's the info I got on this team. Now, as far as Legion of Glory goes, Legion of Glory is actually the cool thing about it is uh, if you notice, let me actually go back and show you guys. So, protagonists, they got what, like eight people. Origin of Light, and 13 people. So, if you look at Legion of Glory, these guys got 15 people. So, there's a lot of people in this. That's actually an advantage. That means that. If you choose to buff this, you're going to be buffing more people than you normally would in a faction. Um, essentially, they're pretty balanced, magical and physical. So, like Leiden here, he's one of the top physicals. Liana's a healer. Jessica can do magic, etc. Sherry's a really good flyer. But, uh... Um, like, how, how should I say this? They're... They have very good physical magic and support, but their cavalry is not that good. They don't have any cavalry or too many cavalry units. And then uh, there aren't a lot of characters in this that can do additional movement. Y you'll hear to it referred as to as formation, but basically what that means is characters that ha have either additional movement after a turn, let's say three spaces or however many spaces, or characters that somehow they can proc an extra turn for themselves or a hero. So like Liana, when she gets up later, she can essentially give a free turn to whoever she wants within a certain radius. And then... Turn the music down just in case. Um, I forget how Leiden's work. His was either... I forget if it was like he had to kill somebody. No, no, I think that's what Sherry does. Sherry has to kill somebody, and then she gets an additional turn, as long as she kills him. Leiden has... I Actually, Leiden might be the guy that he gets additional move after the turn. So that's pretty much what that is, so... Uh, whenever you hear, hear me talk about formation now, that's what I mean, is that there's additional ways you can <clears throat> adjust the formation either after a turn or if you meet a certain condition. Now, so that's that team. Now, Princess. Glory's actually one of the better teams, in my opinion. Uh, Princess, they got 11 heroes, but this is actually kind of a crazy versatile lineup. So the crazy thing about Princess is um, they're more team-based. So what that means is you have to get a fair amount of the heroes before you can actually uh, make use of the formation buffs, per se. So like Tiaris, one of the SSR healers, Liana, same thing, Freya, probably the, the best flying knight. Oh wait, no, Sherry's the best flying knight, I think Freya's just someone else. Etc, but you gotta assemble a lot of them before 
you're able to properly take advantage of their buffs because you need to cover all the class roles. So there's like flying knight, there's horse knight, <clears throat> there's regular trooper with like a sword or whatever you want them with. There's the spear people, there's nukers, there's archers, etc. And you just got to try to assemble at least one of all of them before you're really going to going to make an impact depending on, you know, what what other teams and what other faction you are investing in. So, but unfortunately for them, they're actually weak tanks. They don't have too many tanks going on that have good skills. But they can <clears throat> they can still handle most situations though, so it's actually a pretty good pretty good lineup there. Now, next we got the Empire's Honor, Empire's Honor. So, the thing about Empire is uh, they're kind of like Glory, which I showed you earlier, Legion of Glory, but they just have a little bit less members. I think it's more coming out. Uh, Leticia is actually really good. Leticia is uh, the R unit that has attack before and after her turn. Actually pretty sexy. But anyways, before I get to that. So uh, they are like... They're great for frontal battles. They're great up front, but they don't have very much in the way of movement. So formation again, like extra turn proc, movement after their turn, give another unit extra movement or extra whatever. They don't have too much of that, unfortunately. And that's going to be key uh, early game, but especially late game when you're doing more of the harder dungeons in the game. But still not a bad faction. It's just or or a glory is just a little bit better cuz they got more movement going on versus empire. Now strategic masters, strategic masters are kind of your PVP. Um they don't have as many support members. They are more just for doing damage and doing it really hard in the moment. But you're probably going to need to pair them with some support members from another faction if you want them to truly uh shine at their roles. And they all take some some work uh, investing in as well. So these aren't heroes you will see too much in most people's top tier list for the most part, but they're still really good hero heroes. And then we got Dark here. So Dark is uh, PvP orientated. So they have a lot of debuffs, especially for shutting down attack. But the issue with them is they can disable and they can, you know, debuff really well, but they don't have any heals per se. So if you're going to invest in this faction, they don't really start to shine till mid game. And they're going to shine in PvP, but they're not really going to shine a huge amount in PvE. So you got to take that into consideration if you're going to think about investing in the dark faction. Now, eventually, I forget how long it's going to take, but it's going to take like some what they said it was like five patches or it was probably a little bit more than that uh there's going to be another faction they're not listed here currently because they're not global yet but there's going to be a faction called meteor and essentially from what i understand i think they're going to be a harder nuking faction but i don't have that much information on them so we don't have to worry about them too much right now but so, the reason that I'm talking about the factions, guys, is because at the beginning of the game, in case you missed my other video, um, you're going to have to basically figure out, okay, these characters, etc. Well, you're going to figure out who you're pulling for if you're re-rolling, and you're also going to have to figure out which of these two, most likely, you're going to invest in early game because spreading your resources out farther than that is not recommended. And... Uh, essentially, you're going to try, you're going to draw like certain heroes and they're going to have cross factions because most heroes, they have two cross factions. Some of them have three. And then you're going to see, OK, which faction can I invest in? Because factions get passive buffs that you have to invest resources into over a long period of time in order to upgrade them. Things like attacks harder after getting attacked or extra defense, etc. And so you're going to have to, based on your lineup of heroes, decide, okay, I should invest in this faction because I have the most of this group, or I want to invest in this faction because these two groups synergize very well. So th that's the type of thing. That's the reason I'm going over the, uh, the factions here and why you guys 
want to know the basic ins and outs. Now there's going to be more uh, complicated things to go into when we go into which heroes do what, etc. And as we play the game, you know, we'll figure out which heroes do what and which heroes can't do what, which factions have, etc. So I hope this guide helped you. This is just going to be a short guide. And good luck on your draws and your rerolls tomorrow. I'll see you guys later on. Peace.